Cool. This is cool. This is easy. This is these days. Spooky Sunday dinners. Spooky Sunday dinners. Spooky Sunday dinners. Still can't afford a theme song. Hey guys, for those of you that don't know, my name is Johnny Taylor and this is Spooky Sunday Dinners. Where every Sunday, every other Sunday, when I'm late Monday, Thursday update coming soon. We talk about a true crime case that I just really wanna talk about while we make a fairly easy recipe. So if true crime cooking and dark humor is your thing, you might wanna hit that subscribe button below. Hey guys. How's it going? I had some people, two people, ask about life update and reindeer update, so here we go. It's really not that deep, it's just that we're moving, and moving sucks, but it's also awesome, and just a little stressful for someone like me that loves to live in stress. Also, Sven is giant. We met another reindeer a couple days ago that was five years old. Sven is five months old and was two-thirds of the reindeer's size. Maybe he's mixed with something, but he's giant and genius and has figured out every doggy proofing system we've come up with, so he's great. Let me know if you want more life updates. It's pretty hilarious in this house. This week, we are going to be talking about one of my all-time favorites. I know that's messed up to say. You get it, but you guys, it's the one and only. It's the original boogeyman. It's the werewolf of Wisteria. It's the Brooklyn vampire, the gray man, the moon maniac, the man on my shirt, Albert Fish. Yeah, we're gonna go there. And if you know, you know. So, good luck. And because Albert Fish was a fake family man, we're gonna be making another family recipe. This week, we are going to be making my family's version of calabacitas. I know this is a very highly debated dish in the New Mexican and Hispanic community. Meat or no meat, bake or no bake, milk or no milk. This is just my family's take on it. So if your family does it differently, comment below how they do it. So before we get into it, we have one last thing to do. It's Karen disclaimer time. Karen disclaimer number one. These are not professional recipes. I don't have the nutritional facts and they're not really for nutritional value. It's just what I feel like cooking that day. If you try this and you don't like it or you mess up and get sick, not my fault, not my problem. I've got enough going on. Again, not professional, barely scraping mediocre. Karen disclaimer number two. This is spooky Sunday dinners, emphasis on spooky. We talk about true crime, murder, disease, and all messed up things while we sprinkle a nice little bit of comedy on top. That's how I cope with being obsessed with something so very dark. If that offends you in any way, shape, or form, makes you want to pick up a phone to call, text, DM, or email me telling me just how offensive it is. I know. But like also my grandma watches this and just texts me that she really liked the last episode, so shut up. Get a sense of humor. Get cool, like my grandma. Now that that's over, let's get into what we're gonna be using. As usual, they will be listed in the description down below. This is just so you don't get mad at me. Bolt zucchini and squash, calabacitas, plain old canned corn, super simple. Queso of choice, milk of choice, green chili of your choice, you all know. If something like this is too spicy for you, I would highly recommend just getting some super mild canned green chilies at your grocery store. It's really for flavor. I just, I love spicy food and torturing Doug. And our seasonings are super simple. It's our normal salt, pepper, garlic, and we're gonna be using a little bit of butter this week. Can you see? I bought the TikTok leggings. They'll be linked in my Amazon storefront. I actually really like them. I've got a lot of mobility. First thing we're gonna do is chop up our calabacitas and learn who Albert Fish is. So, Albert Fish was actually born under the name Hamilton Howard Fish on May 19th of 1870 in Washington, D.C. Now, what's really creepy is that his father was actually 43 years older than his mother and was 75 years old when Hamilton Howard was born. He was the youngest of four living siblings and actually wanted to be called Albert after one of his deceased siblings and because of the fact that his name Hamilton Howard made the other kids call him Ham and Eggs. 
and I guess that bothered him. Now, it turns out Ham and Eggs was actually the nickname he got at the orphanage that his mom dropped him off at shortly after his father died. This was in 1875, and as soon as now known as Albert went into this orphanage, he was treated awful. I mean, we're talking beat, molested, raped. He saw a bunch of terrible things, and that's what he knew and grew up with. The problem was, is Albert actually started to enjoy this horrible, sadistic behavior happening to him. So Albert's mom gets a job that's supposedly like a little bit better and picks him up from the orphanage when he's 12 years old. He goes home and this is where he apparently starts a relationship with a quote, telegraph boy. Now these kids were really messed up and this is where Albert apparently learned to do things like eat urine and feces and kind of like got off on it. He also started visiting public baths so he could like peep on other little boys at the time. Now, of course, the story goes, we all know it. As he gets older, he does escalate. He also starts suffering from psychosis and other mental illness, which was hereditary in his family. And with this, he started to slowly become obsessed with cannibalism and eating raw meat. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my cast iron skillet, get it nice and hot and ready for the zucchini and squash to go in there. Look at this new cast iron I got for Christmas. I'm so excited. So by 1890, Fish actually moved to New York City and became a sex worker. Now with his sex work, this is how he kind of got away with uh, molesting and raping little boys. Not going too well. But in 1898, his mom actually like arranged a marriage for him and that resulted in six children. Now what's really interesting is he apparently never abused any of his six children, but he had like a paddle that had a bunch of nails put in it that he would have his children and their friends come over and paddle him with. So it would be like, hey Billy, wanna come over to my house, play, and then paddle my dad's ass? Which like, isn't that abuse and like trauma by itself? That same year, 1898, Fish actually became a house painter and he would go around painting houses and still molesting children. Usually it was little boys under the age of six. Again, we're just gonna keep escalating and this is where he becomes obsessed with sexual mutilation. He met a 19 year old intellectually disabled man and kind of started like a weird relationship or affair. It's very unclear whether it was consensual or not, but that resulted in Fish taking him to like a farmhouse way on the outskirts of town and torturing him to the point where he like cut off a part of his pee pee. He was planning on killing the kid, but then decided partway through not to and just like left him there. It said that he like dressed his wound, kissed him on the forehead and said goodbye. Albert Fish's wife ended up leaving him in 1917, which the years of this is crazy. Like this was happening in the late 1800s. But anyway, by 1917, she left him for a handyman and also left all of the kids with him. He had to raise them on his own. Probably not a smart thing for you to leave your kids with daddy that wants them to paddle him. Fish again escalates and now starts experimenting with self-harm, which he loves to take needles and put them in his groin and abdomen, along with the paddle that I'm not gonna stop talking about. The paddle. Our skillet is nice and warm. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some butter in there with our squash and zucchini. Super simple, just seasoning it with salt, pepper, and garlic. In 1919, Albert Fish has another episode and actually stabs another intellectually disabled boy in Georgetown. Now we have to establish that at this time, Albert Fish only targeted and went for intellectually disabled or African American people and children. This was because society basically led people to believe that one, the investigations wouldn't matter, they wouldn't be missed, and they were thought of lesser than as people. You know how I feel about the system. In 1924, Albert Fish found a little girl by the name of Beatrice Keel, who was of around eight years old. After multiple abduction attempts, he was run off by her family, and it was a whole failed plan. But let's keep in mind that it was failed, so it's a Bruin. 
Albert Fish was starting to believe that God was commanding him to like torture and sexually mutilate these children. And he really thought that he was like super religious. Oh, religion. I went ahead and emptied my green chili into a bowl and seasoned it well with garlic so that we're gonna put the pre-seasoned chili in and it's not not seasoned. So now the year is 1928 and we have to talk about Grace Bud. So the story starts with Edward sees an ad in like the classifieds, like a newspaper for a young man, Edward Bud, 18 years old, looking for work. Fish goes ahead and answers the ad with the plan to torture and kill this kid, Edward. After some time, he shows up to promise Edward and one of his friends a job, and that's where he meets Edward's younger sister, Grace. Grace was 10 years old, and as soon as Albert laid eyes on her, he basically like switched up the plan, thought about Beatrice, and was like, boom, we got it. We also have to bring up the fact that Albert Fish actually looked like a sweet, innocent old grandpa. He was in his 50s at the time, and it was just one of those things where like, he looks like a grandpa, he's like well-dressed. You're gonna trust him. You're gonna be like, oh, this sweet old man, he can watch my child, he can babysit. And he kind of played off of that. He made up a story that he had to go to his niece's birthday party, who was the same age as Grace. He tells Grace's parents, hey, can Grace accompany me to the party to go play with the other kids? The parents say yes to a strange old man. So guess what? They go off to the party and she's never seen again. Stop trusting people. I don't care how old they are. I see an old man walking down the street. I don't trust you. For legal purposes, that was not advice to check an old man on the street. Okay, once our squash and zucchini start to get some color, we are gonna go ahead and drain that corn, add it in, and then add in our green chili. Disclaimer, you totally could have put onions in this, but I forgot. We are also gonna season again with salt, pepper, and garlic. Now, weirdly enough, um, another man was actually arrested and was a suspect for the disappearance of Grace. I guess his ex-wife was like, yeah, my ex-husband did it. And the police like totally believed him. And this poor guy spent 108 days in jail before they were like, oh wait, what about old man fish? The 20s, I know, we're back in them, good luck. So pretty much nothing comes of this for six years. And that is when six years later, Grace Bud's family receives the letter. Now this was in fact the worst thing I have ever read. That includes reading the plot of all three Human Centipede films. There is nothing worse than this letter. Please do not look up this letter. I was going to read the letter to you. I had it ready but you won't be able to eat after reading this letter. Basically, this letter talks about horrific child cannibalism and ends with the fact that he cooked her and how wonderful she tasted roasted in the oven and that he did not inappropriately do anything to her body. And this is also addressed to her mother. Don't look it up, don't read it. I was going to. All right, now we are going to start with about a quarter cup at a time of milk. I'm probably just gonna use the quarter cup. We're gonna throw it in there, let it evaporate a bit, and just keep seasoning, like Dory. I actually went in with closer to a half a cup of milk just because I used a lot of veggies. Be sure that it's enough that you get the flavor, you get the creaminess, but it still evaporates and doesn't make it soggy and gross. So clearly the police are like, hey, old man fish did it. And they start to look for him. He was super easy to find and at a hotel room, he was captured. He put up no fight to go in. And once he was in the interrogation room, um, basically confessed to everything with grace. Really fun fact is that when they arrested him and took him in, they found 29 needles in his groin area in him. While being questioned, um, Albert Fish basically boasted that he had children in every state 
the numbers were like up to a hundred. We don't know if that was a hundred children he molested, raped, or were cannibalized. We just know that he was bragging basically about how many kids he tortured and put through literal hell. There are 10 killings confirmed and he confessed to molesting about 400 kids. There are five more suspected killings that they're pretty sure he did but can't prove. Albert Fish's trial began on March 11th of 1935 and they really tried it all with this one, you guys. They tried to say it was uh, religious, it was because he was like a devout Christian dedicated to God, he was doing God's work. I'm not even Christian and that's offensive. I don't like that. I hate that actually. But they tried the religion card, they pulled the insanity card, obviously, and the jury was like, yeah, he totally is insane. And we can put that, you know, put it in the file, but he also is a monster, literal monster. They did um, find out all of the other stories of the kids he did molest and kill as young as the age of three. I'm not gonna go into those stories because of time and the fact that you will never trust any human ever again. If you wish to look them up, I would say proceed with caution, just like the letter. I didn't sleep last night. I'm probably never gonna have children. I now hate old men. Fish was sentenced to the electric chair and spent his time on death row at Sing Sing. All right, once our milk has evaporated and kind of given us a little bit of like a creamy texture on the bottom, we are gonna go in with our cheese. Now, for this recipe, you measure cheese with your heart and always remember to constipate your family. Now, the secret trick is, before we add this cheese, we're actually going to turn off and remove the dish from the heat. As it's cooling, we're gonna melt the cheese and mix it in and it's... Thanks, Mom. So, the horrible thing about this is, although it's believed that Albert Fish was sentenced to the worst possible punishment there is. When they asked him how he felt about going to the electric chair, he said that it was going to be the supreme thrill of his life. He was going to enjoy it. This actually smells so good, you guys. So my favorite part of this whole story is people say, which we know it's totally true, that when Albert Fish went to the electric chair, they hooked him up and it actually took twice as long for him to die and it seemed like as he was being electrocuted he was enjoying it. This was because, you guys, Albert Fish had a bunch of needles up in his pee-pee and he was enjoying the chair. You know what I'm talking about. I'll give you a moment, I'll let it sink in. People try to say this has been debunked, all of that, it's not true. We know it's true. The real people who know the case, we know it's true. Don't lie to me. Don't, I don't like a liar. I don't like a liar, especially about needles and peepees. I don't like a liar. But I think it's safe to say Albert Fish is probably down below if you believe in that. And he is, in my mind, one of the worst serial killers of all time. And of course, as usual, please look at the thumbnail of this video because there will be a photo of him. Maybe I'll put one here too. But you need to see how innocent and just like a cute old man he looked. This is insane. Stop trusting people. I saw, if I saw myself walking down the street, I'd be like, absolutely not. Not that one, not her. Stop trusting people. But please comment down below what you guys think about this case. Anything I missed? Anything you wanna talk about? Did you know about it? Did you know that this is the original boogeyman? Have you read the letter and did you not sleep after? Here are our delicious, creamy, yummy, cheesy calabacitas. It's super easy to make. It's a great side dish or for your vegetarian friends, this could totally be a main dish. Thank you guys for cooking with me this week and thanks for letting me tell you about one of the most insane serial killers of all time. Be sure to comment below future crimes you want me to cover and some recipes you want me to try. Thank you for watching Spooky Sunday Dinners. I am still singing. I still can't afford a theme song. Sorry I forgot the onions, mom. Y'all do it, invest in a cast iron. Changed my life. You know, Mike, Mike is on. Ba -na 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 -na. Ba -na -na -na. 
Ba-na-na-na. Oh, that's a good song. What's that song? What's love got to do? Got to do with it. What's love?